So after eating dinner, I, uh, I had all these places that I still needed to do, all these plans for the day that I hadn't completed yet. And, uh, well, my days are kind of made up as scavenger hunts. Uh, at the beginning of the day, I have all these little papers that I've made up that have uh, all these little profiles and all these buildings that I want to see. And uh, some some of the things that I want to see, you know, take take about five minutes to go and just look at it and you know, take some pictures, where other ones are, are a little bit more involved. Um, but I had all these things that I had uh, left to do for that day that I hadn't uh, had the chance to do yet. So I uh, I went and, and uh, tried to, to do some of them at least, even though it was pretty late in the day. So the first place that I went to was uh, the fire hall um, that we used in the Ghostbusters movies as the uh, headquarters of, of Ghostbusters. So it's a, a real existing firehouse that they still use today. Um, they, uh, uh, they've, been, they've been there for many years and uh, I was lucky enough when I got there to see them pulling the fire truck right out of the, right out of the garage door right as I got there. And uh, that was pretty neat seeing it come out of the big ladder truck uh, that they, they sent uh, two of the firefighters out on the street to uh, to uh, make sure that cars and traffic and people didn't stand in the way while it was backing out, or I think it was driving out, uh, while it was coming out of the fire hall. And uh, so anyways, they got in the fire truck and they drove away. It wasn't, didn't seem to be in a hurry to go anywhere. It was maybe just a, a drill or something, or a uh, uh, just had to get their wheels running every so often, I guess. Uh, that was neat. I, uh, I looked inside uh, after they were gone. They closed the door, and I looked inside through the a little window on the door there and I looked inside and I saw it and uh, I was a little actually disappointed looking inside to see that they had no fire pole. Uh, the firehouse was built so that there's the, the garage in the bottom and there's two, two uh, uh, I guess living quarters above it um, but to get from the living quarters to the, the main part it looked like they just had to use stairs which isn't what I thought was in the fire hall but uh, anyways. <laughs> Uh, when I was on my way to see that, that landmark uh, at Ghostbusters headquarters, I uh, saw this really weird looking building that uh, I don't really know what it was. It looked like, I don't know whether it was just uh, it was art or, or what it was, but uh, interesting nonetheless. Now, the next place I went to uh, was a place called, a restaurant called Felix Restaurant. And uh, uh, it looks like a pretty ordinary restaurant, but the, the claim to fame for it, for at least for me, is that it was used in one of my favorite movies, uh, the movie Big Daddy. Uh, if you remember that movie, uh, Adam Sandler and uh, the boy that, he, that he's taking care of, Julian, uh, on one of the first days that they're, uh, that they're living together, they're rushing to McDonald's uh, to get there before the breakfast uh, menu closes at 11 o'clock, I think. And on their way there, uh, Julian needs to go to the bathroom. You know, Adam Sandler says, oh, just wait, we'll be at, we'll be at McDonald's very soon, and then you can go once we're there. And he says, no, but i got to go now. So what he, what he ends up doing is he, is he says, okay, come with me. And uh, so he goes, they're right outside of Felix. So they ask, the, they ask one of the waiters or something if he, the guy can come in and use the bathroom. And the waiter says, the bathroom is for customers only. So, uh, so Adam Sandler takes uh, uh, the boy around the corner. And uh, he, sh he says, go to the bathroom there. They both go to the bathroom on the door of that restaurant. And... Uh, <laughs> So that was the significance of Felix Restaurant, that um, in the movie they, they peed on the outside of that building. It's actually what the cover of the, uh, of the, of the, the movie is, or the poster from the movie and, and the cover of the DVD, um, are, are them standing outside this building going to the bathroom on, uh, on Felix Restaurant. Um, after that, I, uh, I was heading over to another, another one of my scavenger hunt locations. And uh, I saw uh, Little Italy on along the way. Little Italy, Little Italy is just one little short little street um, that's uh, all, I guess, Italian-based uh, uh, restaurants and uh, things like that. But uh, it's got a big sign that says Little Italy on it. And I stopped and I, I went down that street just briefly just to, to see what it was like. And uh, that was neat. Uh, the, the place that I was on my way to was called Sarah Roosevelt Park. And uh, the only reason that I wanted to see that was just because... Um, having looked at New York maps of New York City uh, um, in preparation for this trip, I had seen this park, and it, from the from a bird's eye view, it looks really neat because it's this long, little, narrow strip of park that spans across many different streets. Like the street, the park stops and then it starts again, but it's just this long, narrow section of four or five different blocks of of parkland, which 
Um, from the from the map, it looks pretty cool. So I went to check it out, and uh, it was a pretty nice park. So there's lots of different activities going on in the park. Like there was a big playground, and there was a soccer field, and there was this field that had a track around it for running, and uh, basketball courts. And uh, they had at the playground they had this neat uh, little thing that that had uh, there was nine little squares that were like like the buttons on a telephone, and uh, someone could stand on top of them and they jumped on different squares, and then it played different notes. So you could play a little song, I guess, on uh, on this little musical instrument sort of thing. And uh, I tried it out for a little bit, but uh, uh, it was it was harder than I thought it would be to, to try and actually play something. I couldn't really figure out what. Uh, they didn't have anything written on them, so I didn't really know what uh, what notes they were, and I couldn't really pick them up, recognize the pattern of how the notes uh, incremented themselves. So, but it was it was a cool idea, a cool thing for for kids in the playground to see. Uh, while I was on my way to the next place that I was going, I saw a pizza man, a person wearing a, a uniform from Domino's Pizza, riding a bike, and on the back rack of his bike, he had a pizza that was strapped down on the rack inside a an insulated case, like they usually. Uh, used for delivering pizzas, and I thought that was pretty cool, uh, seeing a pizza man delivering a, a pizza uh, on a bike, uh, because where I come from, pizza's always delivered um, by car, and the only person, I've, I've never seen another, I've never seen anyone uh, carrying a pizza on a bike, with the exception of myself, who likes to order uh, pizza for pickup, and then pick up the pizza on my bike, and I would use a similar method to strap the pizza to my bike. So the next place I went to was the intersection of First Street and First Avenue, and uh, just kind of a numerical uh, neat thing to see. Um, and uh, th that intersection was actually featured on an episode of Seinfeld uh, when, when Kramer um, he goes out and he's out exploring somewhere, and he gets lost, and he finds a payphone and he calls uh, calls up Jerry. And he says, I'm lost. I don't know where I am. And, and Jerry says, okay, look at the street sign. Where are you? And uh, he says, I'm at first and first. And then Kramer says, how can, how can that be? How, how is it possible that one street intersects itself somewhere? But I, I was neat to see the one and one. And uh, after that, I figured, well, I'm here. Why don't I go and see 2nd Avenue and 2nd Street, where they intersect? So I went and did that. And just as I did that, uh, well... As I had been traveling around doing those last uh, few little places I was seeing uh, before that, I could see that a big black cloud of, uh, of rain was, was coming in, and you could hear uh, thunder in the distance. But right when I was standing at second and second, all of a sudden, rain just started pouring down really, really heavy, and the winds picked up. And uh, after getting my, my pictures, I quickly ran, and I, I went and um, I stood underneath uh, some scaffolding for, for one of the buildings that was right near there. And uh, I, uh, well, I made sure that I had my uh, all of my electronic stuff inside of uh, my dry sack to, to protect them uh, for uh, when I rode home. But this what this rain was just ridiculous. Uh, like like if you stood out, I saw people that as I was standing there, there were many other people that did exactly the same thing as me. As soon as the rain started like that, they all ran in uh, under the scaffolding for protection. Um, but as we were standing there, there was people that were walking past us that, that didn't stop. And they were just, like, literally they had jumped into a pool of water and got out. They were just totally, totally soaked. Even the people with umbrellas, because the rain was coming from sideways. And, and uh, it kept changing directions. And, yeah, it was just really, really heavy rain. So I waited there for what seemed like about 15 minutes. And it wasn't just me waiting. There was, again, quite a, quite a few other people that were doing exactly the same thing. Um, and I was really hesitant to, to go home because uh, I knew that it was fairly, fairly far uh, ride back to back to uh, the hotel, probably about a 15 minute ride. And uh, by this point, as the, the cl cloud rolled in and, and the clouds rolled in and it started raining, um, the uh, the sky had gotten really dark, and all of a sudden it had been kind of fairly light outside, and it was also really dark. I didn't have my bike lights with me. My bike lights were sitting um, here in the hotel room, and uh, I was, you know, I was hesitant about riding on streets I had never been on, in uh, in an area of town I hadn't really been to either, and uh, riding without lights and through pouring rain, you know, hard hard visibility. So I was really really worried about that. So I waited there until the rain at least settled a little bit, um, but 
<laughs> I ended up getting soaked anyways coming home. I uh, I didn't wear my, I had my jacket with me, but I decided I'd use my jacket to wrap my backpack up to protect all the other things inside my backpack. Because I figured that once I got home it would be pretty fast. It would be pretty easy for me to get myself dry, but all the little things in my backpack, all the little notepads and and uh, pencils and all that stuff, it would be a really big challenge to get all this stuff out of there and get it dry. So I came home and my, my t-shirt was, was just totally soaking wet. And, uh, <laughs> well, I was glad to be home. Uh, so anyways, after that I just uh, uploaded all my, downloaded all my videos off of my camera and uh, went through and sorted them. And then I started recording this video. So that uh, concludes my, my second day traveling around Manhattan and Brooklyn and the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island. Uh, I hope you enjoyed hearing about my day. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.